by recording. Mm -hmm. Sweetie, why are we here? Why are we here? Yes, we're here to make yet another How I Fixed My Refrigerator, my three-year-old stupid Whirlpool refrigerator, which stopped making ice and stopped cooling effectively. We're here to make yet another one of those How I Recharged My Refrigerator with R134A. Except we have several twists not covered by some of the excellent videos that are oh. on YouTube. Oh. Yeah, what twists you oh. want to know? What twists? Yeah, exactly. What twists? Well, first let's start with a basic element. This is the Supco bullet piercing valve. Can you turn it a little bit so that we see in yeah. a little bit? Yeah. Now, now I've modeled it. This represents the copper tube that's on the low side of the compressor. Mm -hmm. And here's the three screws all beautifully covered by Vegas Romaniac mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and the other excellent videos. There's your service port. This mm -hmm. is very well covered on YouTube. Here's your sandpaper for sanding. Let me see, let me see. Any old, any old light. Oh, fine, very light. Fine very grain fine. sandpaper. Just to polish up the copper mm -hmm. before you attach the valve. Yeah, very slow. See how it's polished? Yeah. Okay. That's just to get any, you know, impurities off the copper. Okay. Because when you pierce the copper with the piercing screw, you don't want to inject any junk mm. into your fridge, right? Uh -huh. So that's why you sand it up with the paper. Mm -hmm. What's new? Leak saver. Leak saver. So my issue was that I had the refrigerator for three years, and then I noticed gradually, gradually it wasn't cooling as well. Gradually, gradually ice was not being made in ice trays. I don't even have an ice maker. Fridge isn't working. Gradually, over time. Which seemed to indicate a refrigerant leak. So I figured instead of just throwing out the $800 refrigerator and going and buying a new one, I'd spend 60 bucks and follow the videos and give it a try. But if I'm gonna fix it, let me really fix it, let me see if I can kill whatever leaks exist. I was very impressed by the reviews of this product. I emailed them to ask what size should I get. They said definitely the small system. This is their smallest product. This is it? What you have in your hand? And this tube is what you get in the mail from them. They seal it in envelope one, then they put it in envelope two, and it comes in envelope three. Very nicely packaged. It's just a plastic tube that was filled with their magic elixir. Mm. That they say is like the red blood cells in your body. If it finds an opening and hits oxygen... You mean the platelets? The platelets. Oh, thank you, Madam Scientist. Yes. Yes. So not the red blood cells. The platelets, not the red blood cells. <laughs> I stand corrected. <laughs> so it's got a liquid in it that you inject into the refrigerator. And uh, after you put the valve on, and with the screw screwed down and closed, you connect it up nice and tight very easy mm. very secure there's a good gasket in there that makes a good seal the leak saver people say that you can then open this just a little bit let me get the hex screw so right now if this is screwed here, let me screw it all the way down. Screwed all the way down, it's closed. If you do a half, and then another half, and then another half turn, it's absolutely open. 
<clears throat> At that point, the compressor in the fridge will start to pull the juice from the leak saver into the system. So that's what you want. So you can then leave this open. It's fine to just leave it open. And then you want to deal with the hose. The hose is unique feature number two about my video. Unique feature one, leak saver. Unique feature two is the blue cap. This is an adapter cap. And what it does, it says connects standard piercing style hoses to self-sealing cans. So I bought this can at Home Depot. It's just plain old R134A. Mm -hmm. um, it says requires adapter for or EPA compliant hose. In my experience, my impression is the hoses you get on Amazon are not EPA compliant. Mm -hmm. That instead they're made for piercing style cans. Mm -hmm. um. And they don't work as well. I tried this hose by itself with the can and it didn't seem to work smoothly. When I added the adapter, it worked very smoothly. Let's do a quick demo of what it's like to attach the can. I'm going to unscrew it quickly. You'll hear a tiny pssst. That's a tiny drop of the gas escaping from the can, but then the can will seal. It will self-seal. Right now there's no gas flowing. Why? The valve is cranked all the way off. Closed. Clockwise closed. Did you hear it? A little hiss? Yes. yes, a little hiss. Yes. Self-sealing can. See, it's got a little plunger in there that when you screw it down, opens the can. Lots of gaskets, so you can leave it attached. The gas will not flow until you open the valve. Let me reattach it. Just get it started lightly and then do it as fast as you can. And now it's nice and tight, nothing flowing. So, cap, that's the second feature of my video that I haven't seen well covered on YouTube. Leak saver, cap. Third feature, not covered in a lot of the recharge videos is purging the air out of the hose. Mm. We don't want to just screw it on, screw it on nice and tight and let her rip and, and, and let her rip with the gas. Instead, we want to get, because doing so will push all the air that's in the hose into the refrigerator and the experts say that that's bad. Like you hear all these videos about pulling a vacuum and, and getting the air out of the hoses. Yep, I think it's important. I want to say another good thing about the leak saver people. I asked them about this hookup and I asked them about my hose air purging technique. Very good about responding with videos, I mean with uh, email replies. And uh, so, hats off to LeakSaver. I mean, you send them, I sent them a complicated email about my setup. They replied very quickly, and they even apologized that it took them a whole day to answer my email because my email was a little complicated. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> so, what's the air purging technique? We're going to connect this loosely. Loosely, not screwed down, just Let loose. Let me see. Okay, so we're just going to get it connected so it's, it's mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. it's on, but not tight. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to crack the can a little bit, just a tiny bit. That'll let the gas start to flow, mm -hmm. start to flow, push mm -hmm. the air out at the seam. Mm -hmm. And then we tighten this down. So now the hose is filled with refrigerant instead of air. 
Okay. Very smart. Okay. So this apparently is an approved HVAC refrigerator technique. Mm -hmm. Okay, watch the valve. Now, the nice thing about this cap is that I think, I mean, definitely this is how it works, counterclockwise now means open, let the gas flow. And that's logically intuitive. And you don't need to turn it a whole lot. It seemed that on the videos, there was a lot of spinning of this top. Here, you just need a little, a little quarter turn and you've got good flow. I'm gonna do a little eighth of a turn. Then we'll start to hear the gas, hear and feel, and then I'll crank it down. You ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. You gotta get a good solid grip here so you're not twisting the cap when you twist the valve on top. Hear the gas? Yes. Hear the gas? Yes. Now it's leaking. Why the valve is open? I'm gonna crank it down. Pretty cool, right? Now, in real life, when you do this with your fridge, it's okay that this is open, right? Because it's the f connected to the want. fridge. It's connected to the fridge. Here, it's leaking because I just used a piece of junk pipe for demonstration purposes. So, in real life, you would not crank this down at this point. I mean, you could, but you would not crank it down. You just let the stuff flow in. Mm -hmm. Come back to your can, clockwise to cut it off. See, I only needed to turn it just a little bit. It's off. <clears throat> and then on the gauge, what you're registering. Now, this is not a true picture of how things will be. So don't worry about the needle. But at this point, you'll be measuring the pressure inside the refrigerator here at the valve. You'll be measuring the refrigerator pressure the needle will be down around zero uh, or negative, most likely, if you're low on refrigerant. Mine was at minus 10. Mm. Way down, way down. So I had to pulse the R134A. I had to pulse it, as you see in Vegas Romaniac and the other excellent videos. You don't want to dump a ton in. You want to put a little in while the compressor is running in the refrigerator so that it's sucked in and circulating. This low side on the valve is also called the suction line because the compressor is pulling everything in and then compressing it and pushing it into the refrigerator. So this is the low side, the suction side of the compressor. And that's really about it. I mean, at that point, I was putting a little in, cutting off the can, looking at the gauge, watching where it's the needle settled after five minutes, putting in a little more, <clears throat> watching where the needle settled. I have refrigerator and freezer thermometers. I bought a couple for two for seven bucks on Amazon. I'll have a link. Um, and, um, and that way I could measure the progress of the refrigerator. Uh, at a certain point, I just walked away for a half an hour at a time. I went and watched a DVD, came back, checked the refrigerator, pop a little more refrigerant in, walk away, just walk away. Don't hover, <laughs> don't push in too much stuff. And that's the end of my video. I didn't think we needed to go behind the refrigerator. Plenty of videos about that. But I wanted to talk about Leak Saver, the blue cap, and the procedure for purging the hose. And there you have it. If you found this video useful, please subscribe. <laughs> please like my video. You know what buttons to click. I really would appreciate it. Thank you. All right, thanks.